Hello everyone, welcome to our video lecture series on HISIS and UNISIM simulation. These uh, lecture series have been organized by uh, www.unitoperation.com and today we are going to discuss how to define a conversion reactor using the HISIS and UNISIM environment and my name is Shikhar Bhattacharji. So as usual, we always start with uh, an example. So let's go to the first example here. Chlorine is produced from normal heptane by dehydrogenation over chromium oxide catalyst. So this is what we have this normal heptane here. See, as you can see, there are seven carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is my normal heptane. And over the chromium oxide catalyst, and the conditions normally are 425 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure this is converted to toluene and hydrogen so that's why it's called a dehydrogenation reaction. that means hydrogen is taken out um, and and this is basically an aromatization of an aliphatic hydrocarbon this is an aliphatic hydrocarbon and this is an aromatic hydrocarbon so this typically is, is an aromatization reaction and this happens over the chromium oxide catalyst uh, let's go to the production process uh, toluene production process requires heating. In this particular case, we are taking 100 kilomole per hour of normal heptane at atmospheric pressure. So, this is at atmospheric pressure and 20 degrees Celsius. So, this is coming uh, normal, pure normal heptane. Pure normal heptane is coming at 1 atmosphere and 20 degrees Celsius. And this is heated in a heater uh, to 425 degrees Celsius before it goes to the reactor. So, this is my heater. Uh, in this heater, it is heated to 425 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere pressure and then it enters my catalytic reactor. The preheated feed enters the catalytic reactor which operates at 425 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure. So uh, here this is a packed by tubular reactor where the uh, normal heptane comes in and 15% of the feed that comes in so that my conversion is 15% 15 15% 15 uh, 15 of the product that comes in is converted to uh, uh, toluene. And as you can see, since this is a dehydrogenation reaction, so normally these are endothermic reactions. So we have to supply heat to maintain uh, at, a, at a constant temperature of 425 degrees Celsius. So uh, this is an isothermal reactor. Therefore, we have to externally supply heat normally through a jacket uh, to maintain this reactor at an isothermal condition of 425 degrees Celsius. So as the product comes out, uh, this is uh, then it is cooled. Uh, this is a cooler cooled uh, from 425 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius and later on uh, it enters a flash drum where the products are flashed into a vapor phase and a liquid phase. So mm, and this flash drum of course is maintained at 20 degrees Celsius. So this is my uh, flow diagram and we'll try to simulate this particular process in, uh, in a HISIS environment. So let us go to the HISIS environment. As usual, uh, we uh, define the uh, components here and the components of, of course are normal heptane. Uh, so we enter that and then of course we have toluene. So we have toluene as you can see this has already come toluene and then we have hydrogen and that has come. So we have added all the three components. So the components have been added. Uh, next we have to go for the fluid package here and for the fluid package we add um, the ping Robinson equation of state because that is what it says in my problem statement that we have to use the ping Robinson equation of state. So that is what we have done. We have selected the Ping Robinson equation of state. So that is uh, taken care of. And since uh, there is a, a reaction involved, here we have to define the reaction which is involved in this particular case and we will show you how to do that. When we hit click on this tab reactions of course uh, a, a, a default uh, global reaction set comes in. Uh, you can add different sets of reactions which could be applied to different types of reactors. Uh, we will try to show how to do that in our future video lectures. But in this case we 
which is a very simple example of only one reaction in one reactor so this global reaction set is uh, okay and what we do we just go add reaction so several options come in which is a conversion reaction equilibrium reaction heterogeneous catalytic reaction kinetics and simple rate so these are the different options available and we'll try to show you um, how to use these or where to use these different options or different types of reactors in our future video lectures but in this particular case we choose the conversion reaction you say add reaction now we have to define the reaction so what are the components components are of course normal heptane and then you have toluene and then you have hydrogen so we have added this components and as you can see automatically the molecular weights of these components come in now you have to define what the stoichiometric coefficients are so if you go to this reaction here this is my normal heptane and for the reactants you know this is my reactant the re for the reactant the stoichiometric coefficients are negative and the products the stoichiometric coefficients are positive so this is going to be minus one here and this is going to be plus one here and this is going to be plus four here uh, so for normal heptane this is minus one for toluene this is plus one and for hydrogen this is plus four so let's put those values in our uh, definition of the reaction here M minus one for normal heptane and uh, plus one for toluene and plus four and as you can see here uh, the as you can see here the balance error is zero that means the reaction has been properly defined it has stoichiometrically satisfied the reaction if there is any stoichiometric imbalance it will show you that it has not been balanced um, and of course it shows a reaction heat and therefore I can see that you have to supply this uh, 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 ex heat from external sources to the reactor to maintain it at isothermal condition at 425 degrees Celsius anyway so the reaction has been defined now we have to define the conversion so basis for this reaction and you can see the base component is of course normal heptane based on which the conversion is defined the reaction phase is overall although it is going to be a gaseous phase reaction at that temperature and the conversion is 15 percent so that's what is defined in my problem statement here if you can see here that uh, converts 15 mole percent of normal heptane to toluene so we put here 15 this could be a function of temperature and and so that's the way you define the conversion as a function of temperature but in this case it's a very simple and constant conversion of 15 percent so we put 15 and we don't bother about putting any values here so the reaction has been properly defined as you can see this is ready so you cross it out you cross this one out now one more important thing you have to add this one to fluid package so we have to add this one to this reaction one to my fluid package which is the pain robinson equation of say so you add this one and <coughs> you say add set to fluid package so once that is done you can see you have defined the components you have defined the fluid package you have defined the reaction now we are ready to enter the simulation environment okay now there are so many ways to uh, bring in the streams and the components I'll show you the longer way of doing it right now and later on when you get more used to an expert in doing these simulations then we'll show you the shorter way so let's first see the what are the different equipment we have we have a heater we have a reactor we have a cooler and we have a flash drum so why not we just bring this equipment here so this is my heat this is my heater so we bring the heater here and then we have uh, a, a, a reactor and a see here this is a general reactors and once you click on that several options come in I'll show you these options so this is my Gibbs reactor this is my equilibrium reactor conversion reactor yield shift reactor Ziegler Nutter reactor and the free radical plug flow reactor so we will sh be confining mainly to these four reactors uh, but right now we just choose this conversion reactor we'll show you how to use these reactors in our future video lectures so we right click on that and bring it over here so this is my reactor Reactor, conversion reactor so these are on deep red to show you that these not have been defined so once you are done that then we cross it out and then we go for the cooler so we bring the cooler here and then of course we have a flash drum so we just bring the separator here so now we have pretty much bring all the equipment so define the streams first so here uh, <coughs> if we can go to my this one the way we have defined our streams are uh, 
first will the one we define as a feed and the one going out of the heater and going to the reactor of even a reactor feed or R feed and the products which is coming out is reactor product or R product and from the reactor uh, cooler it's going to the separator feed S feed and this is vapor and liquid. So that's why we will define in our simulation environment. So we go here. So we define this one as my feed and this uh, feed after being heated goes to the reactor so we just put as R feed and if there's the energy requirement you just say Q underscore heater okay and one more thing you have to do you have for the parameters you have to right now put the pressure drop equal to zero so once that is done so that that's pretty much taken care of then uh, you uh, click on this conversion reactor here and in the conversion reactor it is coming the feed will be the reactor feed and now you have to define these two products so this call is R product And uh, here, although there will not be any liquid product because at this temperature 425 degrees Celsius, it would be mainly gaseous product, but still you have to define this liquid product. So let's call this R liquid. Okay. And uh, once we have done that, then of course you have to define uh, how much energy you have to supply. So let's put this as Q underscore reactor. Okay, so that's the amount of energy that has to be supplied to keep the reactor at a fixed uh, isothermal condition of 425 degrees Celsius. Of course, the pressure will remain constant. Now, of course, for this reactor, uh, you have to add one more thing. You have to define what the reaction should be. So we have already defined the reaction and this reaction set, you just click here and the global reaction set, which you have already defined. And if you want to see, uh, see, uh, these are the stoichiometric coefficient these are the values which you have given you can just click on the conversion and you can see the details what we have here you can look at the reaction also in details but anyway so uh, the reaction has been defined here so you can just stoichiometry uh, so you have defined uh, what the uh, inlet and the outlet streams are we have defined what the energy stream is and you have attached the reaction to this particular reactor so this reactor has been uh, pretty much defined so once we have done that so let's kind of like uh, do it clean it up a little bit and uh, and let's clean it up a little bit right now uh, then we'll see what can be done so this reactor product will be now going to my cooler so here we just put the reactor product would be my feed to the cooler uh, coming in and of course going out to the s feed s feed and of course you have to define the energy so this would be q underscore cooler and again for this one you have to put the pressure drop equal to zero once you have done that so uh, that's uh, pretty much is uh, defined and as you can see this has been pretty much defined now the only thing is this s feed would be going to this my flash drum and there'll be vapor phase coming out and there'll be liquid phase coming out so why not we define that so the feed that would be coming in here would be s feed and let's call this as a um, vapor and let's call this as liquid so once we have done that uh, so that's pretty much defined so we are uh, we have defined all the equipment is we have to define uh, the process condition for each stream so we click on this workbook here and the first thing we need to do is define the composition so for the composition uh, for the feed which is coming in this feed it is pure normal heptane so we cl click here and we put here one that is one normal heptane that is coming in so we click on that and uh, that's it so this is my pure normal heptane coming in now we go to the conditions here if you remember this was coming at 20 degrees celsius and at one atmosphere pressure so we put here 20 degrees celsius and we put here one atmosphere pressure here and we go to here one atmosphere pressure and it is 100 kilomole per hour of feet so once we do that see this entire thing becomes completely feed stream becomes completely defined and this turns to be deep blue
pressure of course here since we have assumed uh, zero pressure drop so it would be also at one atmosphere pressure and the flow rate of course will remain the same but now we have heated up to 425 degrees celsius so this r feed would be at 425 degrees celsius so let's click put that 425 Four to five, and once we do that, then automatically, as you can see, this stream has completely defined, and of course, this uh, this uh, Q feed, this Q heater, that, that heat duty uh, uh, for this heater has also been defined. So once that is done, now we have to say that this is at 425 degrees Celsius. So how do you do that? The way you do it, you define this temperature here at 425 degrees celsius so this product will be going out at 425 degrees celsius so if you do that and already we have you know, attached the reaction to this one so if you do that 425 as you can see the moment we do that so this becomes automatically defined so this is 425 degrees so it's coming would be, this would be coming at 425 degrees celsius and this has turned deep blue so that means this all the streams have been properly defined so once this comes out from this reactor of course there will not be any liquid phase because uh, this is at a very high temperature so the entire thing would be coming out as a gas phase now it goes to a cooler and in the cooler we have said that we would be cooling it down to um, would be cooling it down to 20 degrees celsius uh, we'd be cooling it down to 20 degrees celsius and one atmosphere pressure so we go here and we put this temperature as s feed temperature that would be cooled down to 20 degrees celsius so we put here 20 degrees celsius the moment we do that you see the entire flow should becomes totally defined okay uh, so what we need to do right now of course is if you want to see uh, what are the floor uh, flow rates and compositions what we practically need to do is just go here and you say add workbook table if you put the material streams automatically all the material streams come in and uh, uh, let me show you in a in a smaller way uh, here and so all the material streams the, all the material streams coming in here uh, if you don't need these uh, liquid volumetric for and heat flow rate what you need to do is just go here and you click on the workbook and you click on workbook and setup and here you delete this liquid volume uh, delete this one and uh, heat a heat flow uh, right now you just delete this one so basically then of course these two go out um, if you want to see the composition here you can see the composition uh, so this is pure feed coming in uh, normal heptin coming in after the heater of course this is normal feed coming in but the product composition coming out of the reactor is given here and of course uh, have the s feed that separated feed which is coming in and the heat, this would be of course here the same condition as this one and the, this one the same condition this one and this one of the same condition and once we do that then of course this would be vapor and the vapor once it is flashed this would be my vapor composition and this would be my liquid composition and uh, if you want to see the heat duty you can just put here and uh, you can just see what the uh, heat duties are uh, and uh, here uh, you can see this is 3766 kilowatt heat would be required and this would be again if you see here that would be uh, 3796 kilowatt amount of heat that needs to be taken out so you can you may in fact print those tables also so anyway that uh, and this is actually 15 percent conversion so the amount that is coming in and the amount that will be going out uh, so here's my flow rates here so this is my molar fluids this is 100 mole coming in uh, and of course this is uh, as you can see um, let's see in a in a better way uh, the flow rates here see you can see here the flow rates here that this is uh, 160 uh, that is the total uh, flow that will be coming out that this is 160 this of course is zero there will not be any liquid flow that is coming out so that is zero or it will be going out entirely as a gas phase so this is 160 here so uh, that would be the product that will be coming out uh, from the reactor so this is my 160 kilomole per hour and uh, of course uh, 
and the vapor and the liquid composition. And if you want to see the fluorides, the fluorides of the vapor and the liquid composition, 62.95 and 97.05 with the liquid and what are their compositions? The compositions are of course given right here. So this is basically the simulation um, and this shows you how to uh, define a conversion reactor and that's the way you do it. Uh, we'll come out with a uh, uh, dif different uh, video lectures on different types of reactors in our future videos. Uh, for now, uh, thank you very much and we'll see you next time.